Okay, not complicated, right? However, number one, it is long, and number two, like I said, people get tripped up by this subtraction here because you're very, you know, half the time you're going to get double negatives happening, and we easily mess up double negatives. <coughs> so, hands up how many of you have encountered ever before. I'm not going to ask if you can do it now, but if you've encountered synthetic division. Hands up. Okay, very small number. All right, that's fine. There's a good reason for that. Synthetic division is not in the syllabus, okay? Um, and the reason why will become apparent as soon as I do it. However, I'm going to show it to you anyway because it's so useful. It counters those two problems that I just showed you. But are we allowed to use it if it's not in the Yes, absolutely. But I'll qualify it in a second. Okay. So I'm going to wrap up on this. Okay. Now, um, I want you to have a look closely at your long division. Okay. I want you to notice that if you were to do this again, but with different numbers, okay? A lot of what you would do is very time consuming and very repetitive, okay? For example, have a look at those, um, have a look at those powers of x, right? The powers of x. You know you're always going to get the same thing on every column. I mean, that's kind of the point of the columns, right? You've got all the x cubed terms here, all the x terms, x squared terms there, all the x terms, and so on. You just have to write them but they're always climbing down a power. Do you notice that? Just like up here, you climb down from hundreds to tens to ones, like that's what you're supposed to do. Here, you're climbing down from x cubes to x squares to x's to constants, okay? So you're always gonna write the same thing every time. You're always gonna end with a constant. The second last one will always be an x, the third last, and so on, okay? So being that you're getting that same predictable pattern, the thing that really matters is actually these numbers, right? Like uh, 1 and negative 1, or 2 and negative 2, 2, or 5. It's the coefficients that really matter. Does that make sense? Aww. So therefore, I can save myself a whole lot of time by writing just the important parts of the division, namely the coefficients. Okay. So here's the way I'm going to do this. I'm going to write a division sign, but to distinguish what's going on, I'm going to write it upside down. Okay. It is a slightly different process. And I'm going to write out the important parts of my dividend, namely the coefficients, which are 1, 1, negative 2, and 5. Do you see? Those are the bits that matter. Okay? They're the bits where I'm saying, oh, how many times does it fit into that? Multiply, subtract. Yes? However, how do you know that the number you're dividing by is always going to be to the power of like? Oh. I'll get to that. I'll get to okay. that. So, so what I've got here is 1, 1, negative 2, Five. Okay. Now I, I will explain that when I explain why this method is not in the syllabus and why I'm going to teach you anyway. Okay. All right. Now that was the first thing. That there's a is a time saving I'm immediately going to get by not having to write x cubed, x squared, x, etc. Okay. The other thing that I pointed out was it's hard because you've got all these subtractions happening, and as soon as you have a negative there, you're subtracting a negative, so you get the double negative, and people mess it up. Okay. So in order to counter that, all of these subtractions happen from this number, right? Did you notice that? Okay, you get this, goes over here, that, that's what makes the minus x squared, it's what makes the minus 2x, and so on, right? So if this number were opposite in sign, then I wouldn't subtract it, I would add it, right? Instead of subtracting negative 1, I would just add 1, right? So instead of getting negative 1 over here, I'm just going to write the opposite of that, okay? Um, another way of saying it is I'm taking the 0, of the divisor, or the root of the divisor, right? The root of this is 1. If I were dividing by x minus 2, I'd just write down 2. If I was dividing by x plus 1, I want it to be the opposite, so I don't have to subtract, so I can add. So I would write negative 1 for this guy. Okay? In other words, I'm trying to turn subtraction into addition by, just like when we were doing addition and subtraction of ordinates. Do you remember that? And I said, hey, tell me how to graph um, sorry. Tell me how to graph this, right? Well, I, I hate subtraction. I'm trying to avoid it everywhere I possibly can. So I reframe the subtraction as an addition, right? So that's what I'm doing. Instead of subtracting negative 1, I'm going to be adding 1 all the way through. Okay? So now I'm pretty much ready. And be careful, blink and you'll miss it, right? That's how fast it is. Um, I've got everything set up. This is the equivalent of having written all of this. I'm setting it all up. And now I'm going to show you the steps. Okay? The first thing I need to do is take this leading coefficient. That's what it really is, right? The leading coefficient. I'm just going to write it down. That's all I need to do. Okay? 
Uh, this is going to be, this method is going to focus on when I have something like these. Uh, when I'm dividing by like x minus 1 or x plus whatever, okay? Just when I've got a very simple divisor, okay? We know how to divide other things that are not so simple, but I'll justify in a second why I'm going to focus on these guys, okay? I'm just going to write it down because every time, like if I had x to the 4 here, I'd still get x cubed. Uh, x to the 4, sorry, x cubed up here. It's always going to be 1. If I had, say, 2x cubed there, and I divide by x. I'm just going to get 2. It's always going to be divided by 1. So I just write this guy down. Okay? And here comes, just like here, there was a step that I had to repeat over and over and over again until I ran out. Okay? So here comes the step that repeats until I run out. I'm going to multiply up. That's what I did here. I multiplied down to there. Right? So I multiply and get 1. And then remember how I wrote the opposite. Right? So I did 1 times 1. And this is the opposite of what I want to do. So instead of subtraction, I've turned into addition. Okay? So what's 1 plus 1? Two. 2. I'm going to multiply, and then I'm going to add. What? And then I'm going to multiply, and then I'm going to add. I told you, if you blinked, you'd miss it. Okay? Let me say it again, right? Remember how... It's okay. Slow down. I'll do another example. Remember how what I was doing was, I was getting an answer, I was going to multiply, which gives me this, and then I subtract. And then I multiply, and then I subtract. And then I multiply, and then I subtract, until I run out. Okay? So here, I've done this in reverse, so that I can multiply and add. Okay? Do you recognize these numbers here? Yeah, do you recognize them? Uh, because I've taken all of the x's out, I do have to put the effort of putting the x's back in. Okay? Now, have a look at what we started with. I started with degree 3 and I divided by degree 1, right? So when you deal with uh, index laws, you know when you do degree 3 divided by degree 1, you should end up with degree 2. You should end up with a quadratic of some kind. So these represent the coefficients of a quadratic, namely x squared plus 2x plus no constant. I have a number ending up on the end. What's that guy? Remainder. That's the remainder. That's what's left over. Okay. 